After coming back to the footer, we stripped all the forms and then we started working on getting the first core first course of fastwall blocks laid. So obviously that went pretty quickly here, but one step that we needed to do was to get them all perfectly level. So the footer was pretty good, maybe within eighth inch across the whole surface, um, but had a little irregulars at the top where the spreaders were. Okay. Now you can see here us fitting the last blocks. Those where we actually, all the walls are kind of weird dimensions, like two and five sixteenths because that let us perfectly fit the blocks as they grew. Now here you can see after we did all our leveling of the blocks, you can see how nice and perfectly straight this turned out. So at this point, we actually took some construct, uh, great stuff construction adhesive and sort of foamed all the corners of the blocks in place. So then from here, we decided to put up some corner boards. So in this time lapse, you can see us going around getting the corner boards nice and plumb off those known corner locations for the blocks. These corner boards are helped us make sure each course was going up nice and plumb. Um, in between the corner boards, we'd end up with a little bit of variation, but we were able to keep that all true. Now here you can see us taking the rebar. So there's little grooves in the top of the blocks and I'll cover that when we uh, do a detail on the blocks. But we have to lay number four rebar inside every other course of the blocks. So on the third course, we had to trim our first blocks. We couldn't fit the full two foot block in here, so we had to trim the mating grooves a little bit. So the fastball rep suggested we get an electric chainsaw, and that seems to work great for cutting these blocks. I was able just to trim down the grooves a little bit, and then we were able to tap in the last block for that course. And here you can see Jamie and Jonathan installing the blocks. Um, just top them up and over, and then we kind of set them down. Use the rubber mallet to tap them back into their groove. Get them nice and kind of lined up right here. Although we do go back on each course and then tighten them up to a string line so everything turns out nice, uh, nice and straight and pretty plumb. You can see us after we've done some strong backs. We're going through with a string line off the corner boards and we're checking how far in the blocks are. We got everything within probably a 16th or so. We just finished getting the fifth course laid today. Um, went pretty well. We got two courses today, no rebar, but we would have had time to do try another course. We needed to. See, we got some strong backs. We put up, it seemed like it could move a little bit on us. Um, so we got it all nice and true. In general, the blocks seem to vary a little bit more than you might think, maybe up to a quarter inch. So some we had to do a little bit of cutting to fit everything in, but because the house was designed all on the kind of increments they tell you, which I think is odd numbers on lengths, and then door openings, I got smaller doors that need a 36 RO, pretty much almost no cutting. Um, so everything fits together nicely. We do have some places where we end up with a little bigger gaps between the um, blocks. But hopefully that's not an issue. So you can see on the inside here, we didn't do our full door box yet. We actually, we actually just have these 2 by 10s here shored up on the edge. We also, for these pieces on the end, kind of right here, they're only one foot section uh, from an all-purpose block. We used some sheathing left over from the shed. Um, there, finally putting it to use. So down here at the bottom, you can actually see on the first course, we got perfectly flat. We went through and we using my top con laser level, we shimmed every single block essentially to get up to the height of the high, highest block. And we got it pretty much perfectly flat within probably a 16th or so across the whole surface. Then we used, instead of doing the mortar, like they describe, I talked to the fastball rep. He said it seemed like it would be fine to do um, this great stuff expanding adhesive set in and 
Everything seems to have stayed pretty flat. So you got wall there. You can look up down the forms. See if I can get a shot down in there. Not sure if you'll be able to see down in there, but we got all our rebar tied. Um, and yeah, pretty much getting ready for the pour tomorrow. Yeah, here's the couple. Here's the spots where some of the blocks met and ended up leaving pretty big gaps. I think it was right here. Um, we had maybe a half inch gap on the wall. And then I think similar thing, similar thing right there. So we figured just go over with plywood inside and outside. Yeah, so you can hear on the top, um, whatever, we checked pulled length on this wall and it's the same length on these courses, just the way the blocks uh, met up ended up being a little different. So we're leaving it like this. Um, hopefully it should be all good. We'll find out tomorrow. So you can see here, um, we're using a conveyor truck. It's backed up. Um, it's pretty small pour. We only needed, I think, five and a half yards to fill everything. You can also see uh, that morning we got a little nervous and decided to add a whole bunch of strongbacks on the inside. I don't know what we added, maybe 12 here. At the end of the day, it was probably more than we needed, but it's always nice to have the first course end up pretty much perfect. So you can see with the conveyor, they have a little sock where the concrete gets ran up the conveyor and then drops through a sock. So we had one of the guys on a board, and then I kind of was controlling the sock. And I'd let the concrete. We didn't do this at first, but ultimately realized the best way to do is to have it hit the backboard and then just slide into the blocks. Now, inside the blocks, the concrete needed to go at the bottom, then fill out. And so we used a number a seven inch slump of a special wall mix. So I think it's like max of three eighth size gravel in there. Um, seemed to do a great job of going down to the bottom, spreading out, lightly vibrated each cell, and just cruised around. I think the whole pour ended up only taking us maybe 30 minutes. And then we're kind of, because there's no finishing on top. All we have to do is get the extra concrete off the top of the blocks. So we don't have to actually finish any of the concrete. We leave it rough inside to give it a better bond. So after 30 minutes, we're like, oh, what do we do with our time? And headed out for lunch, which was pretty nice compared to the footer where there was 30, 40 minutes of finishing until it started to harden up. With the fifth course laid, we're going to get now into getting uh, backfill done, some sub-slab plumbing, electrics done, and then getting the slab done. So it's actually going to be a couple weeks before we get back into stacking more fast wall blocks. But at the end of the day, the pour turned out great, and we're excited to maybe do up to an eight-foot pour on the next pour of these blocks. So the build continues.